Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll crack into an example to see a bit better uh, how it goes. Okay. So, uh, using now the implicit differentiation bit is the bit where you all the mumbo, sorry, not mumbo, all the theory of the background is taken into account and that you understand that near a point, the y is a function of x. So it implicitly, when you, the implicit is about, when you write that down, implicitly you meet all those other things. That's what it means. That the y is a function of x. Uh, so use this implicit differentiation to find the equation of the tangent line of this curve at this point. So, um, we have a picture of the curve here. Uh, as it happens. Okay, so uh, we're talking about point one two. We might just point out does one two um, solve that equation? <coughs> so it's on the curve. <coughs> if I somehow manage now, if if it wasn't, you could still actually do the question. It's just what you're doing is meaning this. If you ever spotted that the point wasn't on the curve, that's a gotcha. I have to give you all the Max, I've messed up the question completely. Um, it has to be on the curve, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, so the idea is that if we're close to a particular point, and even if we don't mention a point, we're implicitly suggesting we are near a point. Okay, so locally near the point, it is the graph of function. Uh, this one, as it happens, is a particular function, but uh, when we do further examples, we won't be able to solve for y. So locally near a particular point, the graph defined by this looks like the graph of function. In fact, why is it to this? I would see that at this point the slope is negative. How do we know that? It's going down. Exactly. So if we were to uh, draw our tangent, it's going down. Um, it's a line. This is we're trying to get the equation of this line. Um, so we use y minus y1, uh, m times x minus x1. Now we've got x1 and y1, yeah? <coughs> we have a point. 1 and 2. 1 and two. One, 2, that's fine. How do we get the slope of a tangent? We have to take question, yeah. Okay. Find m. Yeah, how do we find m? Different, differentiate. Differentiate. Yeah. So we need to find dy dx. Okay. Um, okay. So what I'm going to recommend, you don't have to do this next thing, but I do recommend it. Um, even if you, you know, you kind of want to, you're not too bothered about the rest of the, what's going on, to actually do the questions, I recommend that you write it one more time with the y as y of x. The reason, because, to avoid this problem, because we have an, another type of differentiation next week. Okay, so the curve is 16x to the 4. plus uh, y, which I'm saying write as y of x, to the power of 4, equal to 32. And the other thing is that you only have to write this y of x just once. So what we do is we differentiate both sides with respect to x without ever finding y of x. <coughs> so if you could imagine actually working backward, uh, put this into that, uh, you've got two things are equal, you differentiate both and they're still equal. So if you've got an equation, you differentiate both sides, uh, when you've got this implicitness coming in, you get another true equation, but in between x, it will be between x, y, and dy, dx, and you can solve for dy, dx. So we're going to differentiate both sides, you've got two things are the same, we're going to differentiate both of them. Okay. So I'm going to fix the 16. What is the derivative of x to the power of 4? 4 x cubed. So this is 16 times. Plus, what is the um, rule of differentiation I need here? Chain rule. Chain. Outside, four. inside. Yeah. So the outside, what's the outside function? 4, power 4. Power 4. I'll say x to the 4 power 4, I get by. For me, it's x to the power 4. So the chain rule says differentiate the outside. What is the derivative of x to the power 4? 4x 
for X cube. For X cube. So that's differentiating the outside. The chain rule then says evaluate at the inside. What is the inside? Y of X, which I'm just going to write as Y, times the derivative of what's inside. <coughs> Which are you you sorry, you're yeah. differentiating the y of x to get y there, is that what you're doing? Right? No, 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 I haven't, uh, I just don't get what you're doing in there. That's okay. Sorry. No, thanks for stopping. Actually, it's, 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 it's a good night to ask questions. Although I'm trying to get out early, um, uh, we're just, we're just going to be out of this section, and it's got loads of little questions like product rules and stuff. It is a good <coughs> night to ask questions, right? So uh, what I'm using is the chain rule. So outside, inside. Now I could write an of x here, but it doesn't look good. I don't have to. So outside, inside. So the chain rule says you differentiate the outside. And then the chain rule says, so this would be so that that was x to the fourth. We differentiate that 4x cubed, and then instead of the x, you put in the inside. That's why I say evaluate the inside. So this would be just v. So the see the y of x and the y? Yeah. Same thing. And then, well, here you multiply by the derivative of what's inside, and we do the same here. So that's 4x cubed, where we evaluate at the inside, the inside is y. So instead of 4x cubed, it's 4y cubed. And now we multiply by the derivative of what's inside. This is, in a way, a tricky question. What is the derivative of y or y of x? 2y dx. 2y dx. You don't know what y is, so all you say is the derivative of y, all you can write is 2y dx. Equal to what is the derivative of constant 32? 0. 0. Now, what you can do here is sub in the x and the y, x equal to 1 y to the 2, but uh, we're going to be better off, you're going to be better off getting used to solving for dy dx. Um, now in terms of solving this for dy dx, what stuff is in the way? I could, okay, this is 6 and 4 too. Hmm? Could bring it on the other side straight away. Um, you want to get rid of this? Yeah, I'll bring okay. some water inside you. No, I, I would say, uh, I won't say bring over, okay? You get in trouble. So what's the opposite of adding this? Anyway, so we've got to both sides. So I'll get 4y cubed dy dx equal to minus 64x cubed. And how do I get rid of the 4y cubed? Can you subtract on the right side? Nope. No, sorry. Uh, you divide. Right. So this is multiplied by this. Two things are equal. Do the same thing to both of them. Divide both sides by 4y cubed. Divide this by 4y cubed, it's gone, and you have divided by 4y cubed over here. So the derivative at any point on this curve is minus 64x cubed divided by 4y cubed. We could simplify it, but there's no real need. So this gives you the slope at uh, any point, and you can, you can kind of say things here. So in that first quadrant, when I say the first <coughs> quadrant, I mean up here, what is the sign of the x and the y? Positive. positive. If x is positive, what's the sign of x cubed? Positive. positive. And similarly, this will be, the bottom will be positive. So what will be the sign of this in the first quadrant? Positive. Negative. Negative. So it's going to be decreasing all the time there. Maybe we'll just look uh, maybe at um, this one for argument's sake. Here the x is it positive or negative? One's negative, one's positive. Yeah, actually one, one, yeah, one is positive. Yeah, actually, one is positive. I'm going to say the x is negative. The x's are negative. The y's are positive. So you're going to have negative cubed, positive cubed. What's negative cubed? Negative. Negative. Minus, minus. Plus by another minus minus. So this will be minus by minus, this will be plus. Y is positive, this will be plus. So in that region, dy dx is positive, which means it's going up. So these things we can see from something like this. Okay. 
Now, where are we interested in the slope? One, two. One, two. So we're going to substitute in um, one, two into this. And we get minus 64, one cubed over four times two cubed. I think it's minus two. Yeah, minus two. Okay. So now we have a point in the slope, off we go. So we have y minus y1. What's our y1? One. No, two. Two, two the y coordinate. Y minus y1 is two, equal to m, which is minus two. m is the slope, dy dx. Uh, x minus x1, x minus 1. And what I recommend is you write these in the form y to the mx plus c. Now before I do the y to the mx plus c, we know the m is negative, it's right there. What about the c, positive or negative? Positive. Why? Because it's going to cut uh, and the positive part of the y-axis. So the c should be positive. <coughs> so uh, what I would recommend here is multiply out and then add the two to both sides. So we got y minus two is equal to minus two x, and then minus two by minus one is plus two. Add the two to both sides. Y is equal to minus two x plus four. Um, you can see it goes off the graph, it cuts off the graph up at plus <coughs> Any questions on this? Uh, we'll do another example. So what we're saying, what you're saying here is if we continue on the tangent and we cut the lines at uh, plus four, minus two. No, no, it'll cut at plus four. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying anything about the other cut. The other number is the slope. So it's minus because it's going down. Now what it means is every time you go across one it goes down two. But uh, the, the rough, just the rough, just take the rough bit that it's negative means it's going down and the, pl uh, the four cuts at four. Okay. So uh, by, um, sometimes I give the pictures, sometimes not, but I have them all here just to kind of help to kind of uh, get a handle of what's going on. Use implicit differentiation, find the slope, just the slope, of the tangent line to the curve at the point 1 minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is here, down here, the drawing maybe is a little off. Or there's a, I think there, one of the graphs here might be wrong. I know it said it should be okay. <coughs> I'm, I'm going to guess it's okay because I, I know zero zero is on the curve. Does zero zero satisfy the equation? Yeah. 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 So I have a, I have a good feeling that that's is actually okay. Okay. So locally near. 1 minus 1, uh, by the way, the locally means um, pretty much away from this vertical bit, so maybe everything from here on probably is the part of a graph of function. This is one, theoretically, you can actually solve it using the minus b formula to find y in terms of x, but no, don't do that. Um, okay, oh, that's written there. Um, and we expect it to have negative slope at this point. Now, this question is just looking for the slope. So I recommend again that you write the y as y of x. So we have 2x cubed minus uh, y of x uh, equal to 3 times y of x squared.
Now we differentiate both sides with respect to x. Now the thing on the left is a sum, so that's good, we can do it term by term. Uh, getting uh, ready for next week, I'm going to go very slow on this one, and I'm going to fix the 2, and then differentiate the x cubed. What's the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. Minus. Dy dx. You don't know what y of x is. When you differentiate it, all you can say is it's dy dx. Once again, I'm going to fix the tree. What rule uh, am I going to need to differentiate the y of x all squared? Change. So, what's the outside function? Square, x squared. X squared. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. So, 2x evaluated at the inside. What is the inside? Y. 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 <coughs> Times the derivative. What's inside? Derivative dy. Uh, <laughs> derivative of y of x? Now, what we have, this is now an equation with x's, y's, and dy dx's, so we need to solve it for um, dy dx. Okay? So, if you're trying to solve for dy dx strategically, what should you, uh, and there's one small thing, right? So, um, I can't do, um, say I divide both sides by 6y, and I get, uh, say, 6x squared. That's the 2 by the 3. Minus dy dx divided by uh, 6y. So I can get to this. Have I solved for dy dx? No. No. This is self referential. So this is like something like who are you? Uh, I'm my parents. Um, I'm my parents' child, whatever. And then they say, and then who's your parents? Oh, my parents are my parents. Itself, it doesn't actually. To know what this is, using this, you have to know what it is. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Right. So um, we can't do it like that anyway. What do I need to do? Kind of strategically. Bring the x on the other side. Uh, subtract six x squared from both sides. You're so you're going to, to get the dy dx, both dy dx on together, one side. Yeah, and we're going to get the dy dx together. Do you want to get this one gone or this one gone? Yeah, this one better. So I can get rid of that, but I have uh, all the dy, dy dx on one side. What's the uh, inverse of the take away dy dx? I think. I think do that to both sides. And a little bit of tidying up. 2 by 3 is 6 by x squared is 6x squared. Equal to... Um, 3 by 2 is 6 by y by dy dx plus dy dx. And I'm going to flip these. Um, there isn't really two sides. I mean, we write it like that, but it's just two numbers that are equal. So if that's equal to that, that's equal to that. So you can always just complete, just write it the other way around. There's no moving. Michal and Mike are the same. Are the same. Mike. is equal to Mike. Mike is equal to Michal. Same thing. So I will be just writing it <coughs> in a second. Okay. Um, I want to get dy dx. Now this is just a, a tiny tricky thing for a second. How the hell? What the hell do I do now? Second. Then we're going to go back to here, are we? <laughs> you, you, subs you divide 6x squared by 6y's. Now we have to. Yeah, if you 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 yeah. so. Um, okay, there's a few things. Do you hold that one for a second, right? Um, so you're saying get rid of the 6y, and you can do that. But you've got two numbers that are equal. You do the same thing to both sides. You have to divide both sides by 6y. 
Yeah. You'll get 6x squared divided by 6y. Yeah. You'll get 6y dy dx divided by 6y is gone. Yeah. But you also have to divide this by 6y. That's a problem. What did you come uh, in? You can do this, but it's uh, we're just kind of solving it as an equation. I you end up with you end up with second derivatives and stuff. Now most people can't see your colleague here sees, and in fairness, like I think Rise is screwed. I didn't really see it like this either. He's seeing very naturally that how many dy dx's are there? No. One. No. no. The six y's and then plus one. Six y plus one. And he's uh, dividing both sides by six y plus one. Most of us don't really see it like that. We need just a little thing to help us. And what we have to do is we have to take out the common factor of dy dx. So we've got six y by dy dx plus one by dy dx. And uh, we need to take out the common factor. 